Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, we will be editing in Adobe Lightroom once again, since I haven't been doing this for a while. So for this image, I'd like to apply a very subtle golden hour look. That means I just want to enhance the overall light a little bit, especially in the highlights and the grass in the background. And for the near foreground, we want to change the shadows a little bit. If you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw file. You can find the link in the description of the video. And now let's go. Okay, here we are in Lightroom. First off, I'd like to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape, which will give the image some more saturation. And that's exactly what I want for this shot. Now for the golden hour light, I can start by increasing the white balance temperature. I don't want to go too crazy, just a little bit. I do want to have it rather subtle here. Okay, now looking at histogram, we can see it does look pretty good overall, but we do have some room on the right side, which means we can make the shot a little brighter. And I think for this scene, it does make sense to brighten it up. In this case, I actually want to increase the highlights. Just like that. And I'm careful to not overexpose anything, but that is looking good. Also, I can bring up the whites. Just like that. Of course, we can add a little bit of contrast as well, because that always looks good. So let's just bring down the shadows like that. Looking at the Instagram, you can see there's some kind of an exposure going on, but that's rather unnoticeable. So that's OK. Anyway, to prevent that, I am pushing the blacks just a little bit. All right. And finally, let's make the image sharper by increasing the texture. And then let's also add some vibrance for some better looking color tones. And here we have the image after the base adjustments. We can toggle the before and after real quick. The most noticeable thing would be the golden light in the bright part in the grass in the center of the image. Looks pretty good to me. Now I do want to change things locally. And for that, of course, I'm going to use a few masks. First off, Let's add some light coming in from the left side. Therefore, I'm using a radial gradient and I'm making it rather big, just like that. And I'm going to tilt it a little bit to kind of simulate the sun direction, just like that. And in here, I want to bring up the blacks to add some subtle glow, but I'm also going to bring up the whites to add some more brightness. Perfect. Now the light for this time of the day does look a little too cold, so I want to change it by bringing up the temperature. Again, only using a tiny amount to not overdo things, but that looks good. Now let's work on the upper part of the sky. I do like the blue color tones, but they are a bit too weak in my opinion. So I am going to create a color range mask. And with that eyedropper, I'm going to pick the color tone I want to change, which is in the upper part right here. You can see we have quite nicely selected the blue part of the sky, but I want to fine tune it a little bit. So let's bring down the refine slider. And thus we are just making the selection a little smaller. I can further refine this by subtracting a linear gradient from the bottom up. Of course, only want to make the top part darker. It wouldn't make sense to make the left bottom part darker because that's where the light's coming in. So that is looking like a pretty solid mask. With this one created, let's bring down the exposure. Just like that. And we get some really cool blue color tones in the sky. Perfect. Next up, we can also work on the foreground a little bit. And here I'm using a linear gradient and just align it with the darkest part of the foreground. In here, I do want to add some texture and some clarity. Could maybe make this area a little darker. In that case, I'm going to drop the shadows. But that's looking good. Now there is one more thing I want to add. So I'm going to use another radial gradient and I'm going to make a really, really small one like this and place it just over the edge of the hill. On this radial gradient, I am going to drop the dehaze, 
which will add some more light coming in from here. All right, and that's it for the local adjustments. Let's enchant the color some more doing some color grading. First off in the HSL panel, I do want to change the saturation. Uh, let's push the yellow saturation just for some more intense golden light. I can do the same with the green tones. And I might as well push the blue tones because those three color tones work really good together. I guess we are at a good point with those settings. Let's switch over to the luminance tab. Here we can enhance the light hitting the grass in the back somewhere by bringing up the yellow luminance. So this will make the grass a little brighter as you can see. So again, be careful here to not overdo it. On the sky, we can drop the blue luminance and give the sky some more contrast. Just like that. Well, that's maybe a bit too much, but I think this looks pretty good. Perfect. Then let's do the split toning in the color grading tab. Here I want to start with the mid-tones and I'd like to apply a colder color tone for them. Somewhere in this range, but let's bring down the saturation. All right, and now let's switch over to the highlights. Here, of course, since we are working with the golden hour shot, I want to apply a golden hour light somewhere in the yellow range. So this is looking like a good hue, but of course I want to bring down the saturation to not overdo it. And then I'd like to use the global colors right here, which I usually not use. But in this case, I also want to apply a warm color tone globally. So again, just selecting a hue somewhere in that range. And let's bring down the saturation. Perfect. Then there's one more thing to do for the color grading and that's happening in the calibration tab all the way down here. Let's bring down the blue primary hue just a little bit. And let's also bring up the saturation. All right. And that's the image after the color grading again here before and after. You can see we now have a very cool golden hour light and the bright grass in the back in the center. The sky looks lovely as well. At that point, we can sharpen this image in the details tab. And as always, I'm dropping the radius, bringing up the detail, adding some masking and then adding some more sharpening. Just like that. All right. And that's like 99% of the editing. All done in Adobe Lightroom Classic. I can actually remove that fence in Lightroom as well, because I just learned that today. So up here we got the spot removal tool, which I usually used to, to remove sensor spots. But up here we can choose between clone and heal. Now if you choose heal, I can just brush over this fence. Just like that. Lightroom will remove it. It's kind of like the spot healing brush in Photoshop. It's just a little slower, to be honest. But for the next and final adjustments, I want to use Photoshop just to have an easier time. So let's open it up in Photoshop. Okay, and I do already spot the sensor spot, so let's remove it real quick. But that's looking good. So what I want to do here is to bring some more lights to the trees on the hill. And I'm doing this by dodging the image. Therefore, we want to create a new layer and let's switch the layer mode to soft light. Then I'm using the TK panel plugin because with this plugin, I can specifically target the bright parts of the trees in the center. So for that reason, we do have different masks for the dark areas, for the light areas and for the midtones. Right here on the trees, we do have a lot of midtones, so I want to use a midtones mask. Just like this one, the brighter parts are the ones that are affected and the darker parts are the ones which will not change when I'm dodging things. So this mask should work pretty good. Let's apply it on our soft light layer and then grab the brush tool. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and now I'm just carefully brushing over the brighter parts here, giving them some more light. Just like that. And you can see the difference is quite big. 
So I'm really happy with how this looks. I guess I'm merging those two. Now comes a more heavier change because at the moment I'm not happy with how the clouds look. I should have gone for a long exposure, adding some motion blur to them. But sadly I did not, so I need to change that in Photoshop. So let's go to Select, Sky to create the sky selection. Then I'm hitting Ctrl C to copy that selection and Ctrl V. So we have a separate sky layer like this. Um, we could fine tune it some more by erasing a few parts around the tree area. So I'm searching for the eraser here. There it is. And I'm just roughly painting along the edges here. All right, that's looking good. Then I'm holding down the control key and click on the sky layer thumbnail to create the selection again. And then let's go to filter, blur gallery, path blur. Here we can create different paths along which Photoshop will blur the image. So there's already one created which I want to get rid of. So I'm just clicking on it and hit delete. Now I can set up my own paths by just dragging the mouse along the image, giving the path a curve like this for a more natural blur. I can also go in different directions just to give this whole thing a more natural look. Then on the right side we can play around with the speed. So let's see, I do want to have a rather strong motion blur effect. I guess this is looking pretty good. So let's just apply it like that. And that's the image with the motion blur effect. To me it looks much better. Of course some people might not like it, but luckily for us there are no rules to photography, so do whatever you want with your image. So finally let's merge those two and at this point I do want to check the Nick Collection plugin. And here we have the polarization effect which will enhance the color some more. So I want to be really really careful here. But I quite like how this is looking. So let's apply it like that. And I do want to add another filter however. I just want to take a look at the brilliance warmth effect. Adding a little more warmth to our image. Okay, that doesn't look good, so we don't need to use that. All right, we're just using the polarization effect, so let's apply it like this. Then that's it for editing this image. I hope this was interesting and helpful. If you have any questions left, as always, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you very much for watching this video.